Okay, hi, this is Marcello again. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, well, probably next time we will have only the, the presentation. Um, but uh, now, um, so you can see the, 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 the presentation. Let's talk about Italy, episode one, okay? Um, my main plan is to have uh, um, a presentation every two weeks so that uh, by the end of the year, uh, the, 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 we will have, we have covered uh, all the, the, the history of Italy uh, and uh, maybe there will be <laughs> some more requests about this, I hope. I hope so. Um, so, um, I'm looking at, uh, at the video right now and uh, I hope that you can see it uh, again. Uh, let, me, let me check. If we are if we are if we are live now, um, okay. I hope so. Um, let me let me check. Uh, just, uh, just to see if uh, every anything is all right. Okay, looks like uh, I'm I'm live again. Okay, so uh, the, the 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 this in this episode one we, we will obviously start from uh, from the beginning. Okay. We will start from the beginning uh, because we have to do it. Well, it may not be so uh, fashionable, so so uh, intriguing, uh, okay? Because there are some some uh, times in our history when uh, uh, the, the the history of Italy is, is not so so intriguing. But uh, well, we hope that uh, we can make it intriguing. Uh, the history of Italy as the history of any country is not only a history of characters, it's not only a history of a society, it's not only a history of, uh, of geography, but it's, uh, it's a mixture of it. So, um, in, in the first uh, years uh, that we are covering right today, uh, this is not going to be uh, a history of, of characters, okay? We'll have many characters in the future. We have the emperors, we'll have Hannibal, we have uh, Michelangelo, we'll have uh, Lorenzo de' Medici, we'll have plenty of them. Uh, there will be some times when uh, we don't have so many characters. We just have Itali Italians, we just have uh, politics, we just have countries, uh, small countries, uh, small regions, small cities fighting uh, each other and uh, well I hope that I, I can make it interesting uh, anyway. So let me start with this. Uh, oh, first of all uh, it can look very bold actually uh, to talk about Rome and, and, and Italy. They are mm, not mm, you, you know, maybe there are some TV programs which cover the whole history of Italy. I'm not aware of them. So, um, how can you dare Marcello to talk about uh, the history of Italy, to make 26 episodes covering the, the history of Italy? Well, that's, that's a huge enterprise. Uh, I will try to do that as best as I can. I don't know if I will be successful in entertaining you, uh, the purpose is to, to entertain, but also to let you know more of our country, um, which, is, uh, which has a lot of history. Uh, and uh, I think that, obviously, if you are going to, to plan a, a trip, and uh, you, you plan a to take a trip to Europe, and to, to squeeze in 10 days uh, Paris, Rome, Berlin, London, um, and in Madrid, you'll probably not be interested so much in, in this history. Uh, but if you plan to come here and spend uh, a good, uh, let's say, 10 days to 15 days, and to, to go in deep in, into our um, society, into how we live, 
into why we are, who are the Italians? Uh, why, why, why are they so uh, well known in Italy? And uh, to, 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 to satisfy your curiosity, maybe you'll be, you'll be interested in hearing what I'm, what I'm saying, okay? I'm not an historian, uh, but I, I, I've always been fascinated by history. Uh, history of any, 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 any places in the world, okay? Um, obviously more my, my country, more my continent, but generally speaking, all areas of, uh, of, uh, of, of the world. And um, I've studied a lot. I've studied a lot about my country. Uh, I, I was fascinated by history um, since I was a kid. And so uh, I will try and offer you uh, the vision of, uh, of several historians uh, from, uh, from different point of views, so that maybe when, when in the future you come, come back or you come here, you will remember some of the stories uh, which I will be telling you and understand Rome and, and Italy and Italians better. That's my primary goal. Well, the, there's no point in denying that um, I'm talking about Italians or, or Europeans, but maybe this is valid also for, for, for people, for, for visitors uh, uh, overseas. Um, the legend of Rome has never abandoned us, okay? Well, sometimes this legend has been turned into a, a, a false or a mere, a mere tale. Okay, just think of, of Hollywood. We all know, uh, we all watch uh, American movies. Uh, so for, for decades, the Romans have been portrayed as imperialists who went seamlessly from a massacre to an orgy. Excuse me, but. <laughs> this, this, this is what, what, how really we are portrayed, they are portrayed. Um, while Romans were always uh, uh, the bad, the, the, the ugly, uh, the imperialists, against whom uh, it, it was right to fight, okay? So, first we had this kind of guys, portrayed in uh, heavily ideologized uh, uh, movies, uh, such as uh, Kubrick's uh, Spartacus, uh, in, in, uh, starring uh, Kirk Douglas in, uh, in 1960s. Uh, the champion of freedom, a dreamer of, uh, of a war of, of equals and lifters uh, of the oppressed. Or the pro-Jewish uh, Ben Hur and his running uh, quadriga. You see, here. Uh, well, this is not, uh, this is uh, Ben Hur, okay? And the guy, the guy uh, before that, uh, well, he's this guy, okay? Our next hero, hero, is uh, um, Maximus Decimus Meridius. I, I, I think you know him, okay? Better known as the gladiator. Um, of course, uh, even if uh, Ridley Scott's uh, gladiator history is, in the, is the background for a made-up story. The points of distance from the historical reality are really many, but the movie remains much loved because, uh, historical regal or not, uh, there's a hero, Maximus Decimus Meridius, general of the, uh, of the army, of the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. And, um, well, in the end, it does not matter if this hero is, uh, is, is the protagonist uh, instead of a, of a historical fresco, uh, of a colossal, uh, exciting, epic, and well-directed fairy tale. Historians uh, note that in Gladiator, the legions have a questionable compact tactics and the strange use of spears. Uh, brackets were not used yet. Marcus Aurelius would have never planned the return to the Republic. And the incredible cavalry charge through the forest uh, in reality is, uh, is impossible. 
and Latin endings are wrong. Okay, that's the first thing I I I, I notice when I watch the film at the at movie theater. Uh, when, when they make uh, the, the, the cavalry charge, he screams uh, Roma Victor. Roma Victor is, is incorrect. Roma is, uh, is feminine and Victor is, uh, is masculine. So you should say Roma Victus. Um, okay, so, but who cares? Good wins over evil, as always in movies. Almost always in movies. <laughs> so back to real history. How did a small village on the banks of a small river in a small country, which always was on the outskirts of the most advanced civilizations of the West at the time, come to dominate the Western world? This is the question. So Rome is more uh, I, I'll try and, and explain now um, the reasons why, why this is. Obviously, you, if you follow the story, you will understand it at the end of, uh, uh, of the story, but I'm anticipating something. Well, Rome is more than its conquests. Rome is its legions, but also its complex uh, civilization, its ability to incorporate the others, making it feel as a part of, uh, making them feel as a part of, of the whole. Um, well, the Roman historian Tacitus wrote, um, I quote, they steal, massacre, rob, and by false name call it empire. Where they make the desert, they call it peace. Uh, unquote. And the, indeed that was true at least in, in, in Gaul and our Asians, France. Hundreds of thousands killed by the Roman soldiers. Uh, but perhaps in that desert called peace, we must see not only empowering, death, destruction, enslavement, but also integration and tolerance and innovation and union. Um, look to Rome also for its great merit, the ability to assimilate, unite, include, without necessarily annihilating the different, without dissolving everything in a single law, in a single pantheon, in a single way of life, of praying, of speaking, of, uh, of fighting. Rome itself was born from a mixture of people, Sabines, Latin, and Sussians, different from each other in language, in lineage, in customs, but uh, Romans are united by the will to be such, as some countries probably you, you, you may you may think about uh, Singapore. Uh, Singaporeans are united by the will to be such. Swiss are united by the will to be such. Um, other countries, uh, the, the federations are united to, by the will to be such. So, union and mixing are the strength from which a new and vital community was born. Uh, and cohesion and self-awareness in the Roman world uh, were not established through ethnic identity or linguistic or territorial continuity. You can see it from, from this map. Uh, they, they, were they, they were talking hundreds of languages in those times before the Romans arrived in Egyptus, in uh, Hispania, in Gallia, in Italia, in Illyrium, in Asia. So, um, the, 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 the Rome uh, fended the world through the acceptance and identity of moral, religious and political values. So, Romans were not Romans by Roman, uh, by the right of blood, by divine right, but by choice and by Roman power. So, after this uh, brief introduction, uh, let's get back to history. Uh, he, the official history of Rome starts in 753 BC. But to understand, we need to go way back to the, to the War of Troy. You know, the War of Troy is uh, on, the, on, the, on the shores of Asia, 
between the Greeks and uh, the, the, the powerful city of Troy for the dominance of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Mare Aegeum, as you see it in, in this map. And uh, it was chanted by the poet uh, Homer uh, in, in uh, the first of the, of the, of the famous poems uh, uh, written by him. Uh, the other was the uh, Odyssea. Uh, and uh, the Odyssey, and uh, this is the first uh, remarkable piece of uh, poetry in in uh, in, in Europe uh, back in uh, in, uh, in the eighth century BC. So, um, according to the legend, when the Greeks of Agamemnon, uh, Ulysses, uh, and uh, uh, sorry. Here is, here it is, the picture, the right picture. Okay, uh, when the Greeks of uh, Agamemnon, uh, Ulysses, and Achilles conquered Troy in uh, Asia Minor and set it on fire, Aeneas was one of the few defenders who could save himself, also recommended by his mother. Uh, the goddess Venus, the goddess of beauty. Uh, after many years of adventures and misadventures, uh, Aeneas landed in Italy, arrived in Lazio, the region of Rome, and married the daughter of the king of the Latins, uh, whose name was Lavinia. And his son uh, Ascanius founded uh, a city called Alba Longa and made it the capital of the Latins. Eight generations later, approximately 200 years later, uh, at the death of the previous king, uh, his son Amulius drove out his brother Numitor and killed all but one of his sons, Rea Silvia, to whom he imposed, however, to become priestess of the goddess Vesta, that is, a nun and a virgin. <laughs> but, uh, however, the beauty of Rhea conquered Mars, the, the god of war, and uh, two twins were born uh, from the union, and Romulus and Remus. Romulus is the, the, the guy uh, we are interested in, in, in this story. Um, then when Amulius knew uh, this story, he did not kill them, but had them loaded on a smart raft, a small raft, that uh, he launched on the river, the river Tiber, Tiber uh, to, to, to take them to the sea and have them drown. Uh, the raft ran aground uh, not far away in the open countryside. Uh, here the two crying children loudly drew the attention of a wolf who rushed to breastfeed them. And that's why that beast became the symbol of, uh, of Rome. Okay, you, you can see this uh, this sculpture in uh, in, um, in in Rome at uh, the Museum Capitolinum uh, on, on the on Capitol Hill. Okay, and mm, as far as I know, uh, <laughs> uh, the story is that the the, the original sculpture was uh, was the, the one of uh, of the wolf, and then the two kids were added later. Okay, so the sculpture is probably from the 6th century BC and the, probably the kids were added uh, um, some years later, probably in 4th or 3rd century, or 3rd century BC. Um, okay, uh, so when the trees grew, they returned to Ambalonga, they killed Amulius, And uh, they put Numitor on the throne. Then uh, uh, they left to found a, a, a new city. Uh, they chose the spot where the raft had uh, run the ground in the middle of the hills among which uh, the Tiber flows. Then, as it often happens, the, the brothers quarrel <laughs> over the name of the city. And Romulus killed his brother. Then with the plow he dug a grove and declared that the city would be called Rome. It was uh, April 21st, 753 BC. 
Rome was born. So, this is the legend, obviously. Um, by it, uh, the Romans declare that they descend from Mars, a pretty ambitious uh, descendants, a forecast of the future of fighting and dominance. The legend stresses the importance of the river and herding. Romulus is certainly a, a legendary character, uh, an eponymous uh, hero. That is, his name derives from the original city name. So, historically, around 1000 BC, from the mouth of the river Tiber to the Bay of Naples, many villages uh, uh, arose uh, which, uh, although inhabited by people of the same blood, uh, waged war on each other and only made peace in the face of, uh, of uh, some common enemy or on the occasion of some regional, regional uh, feasts. So the largest and most powerful of these towns was Alba Longa, the capital of Lazio, at the foot of Mount Albano, which probably corresponds to the uh, nowadays to Castel Gandolfo, which is famous because it's one of, uh, of the residences of, of the Pope. You can visit Castel Gandolfo, it's just uh, 30 kilometers uh, south of Rome. And uh, so from Alba Longa, from this city, some um, adventurous uh, young men emigrated a, a, a few dozen kilometers further north and founded Rome. So from the 10th century BC, the Palatine Hill, you can see here a picture, uh, a drawing of uh, how it, it could, be, could have been in the, in, uh, in the years of the foundation, uh, in the 8th century. 750 BC. Um, so um, the Palatine Hill housed the simple settlement of, uh, of huts and quickly other villages arose on the other hills and uh, that overlooked the timber. To better defend themselves the villages of Palatine and Esquiline hills joined in a single center protected by a wall which then absorbed the other hills. Uh, meanwhile, the community began to have contact with the outside world. And um, here, you, you can see uh, that uh, uh, the, the original seven hills, you know, the, 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 the Rome was built on seven hills. And so, you see, uh, now, uh, we have the, the Palatine, Palatino, uh, that's uh, the area, the hill overlooking uh, the, the Fora. Uh, if you walk uh, to the Colosseum and uh, you, you have the Colosseum in front of you, on the right you have the Fora, you have the entrance to the Fora, and uh, uh, the, the, the hill overlooking the, the Fora is the Palatino. It's, uh, it's uh, where, where the, the name palace takes its, or, its origin. Okay, Palatino uh, gave origin to a palace in English, palazzo in Italiano, uh, and in uh, many other languages have uh, this, uh, this, uh, this root, this language root, uh, linguistic root, uh, palace, okay? So Palatino, uh, that's, that's by the way, uh, the site of the, of the palace of the, uh, the emperors. That was the site of the palace of the emperors. Then you have Campidoglio. Campidoglio, that's beside the, the altar of the fatherland, where the mayor sits uh, uh, and uh, where there's, uh, there are Capitoline, uh, the, the Capitoline museums. Then the Quirinale. Quirinale is where we have uh, the, 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 that's the site of the president of the, of, uh, the Republic of Italy. Uh, then we have uh, Viminale. Viminale is uh, uh, the site. We, we say Viminale in Italy when uh, we want to talk about the mystery of, uh, of the interiors. Because it's the site of, uh, of the Ministry of the Interior. So we say uh, Viminale says, meaning uh, the Ministry of the Interior says. Or Quirinale says, we meaning uh, the, 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 pre the President of the Republic says. Okay? Then we have uh, three more, uh, three more uh, um, hills, the Esquilino, the Cilio, 
and the, the Aventino. And uh, you can see the Tiber, the, 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 the river Tibere uh, on the left. And so the legend probably marks the emergence of a federation uh, that gathered the, the, uh, some communities scattered uh, uh, through the area of these uh, seven hills. And uh, uh, the area was, uh, was very good for herding. And it was a crossroads between uh, Campania and Etruria. Etruria is now Tuscany. And the very rich areas of Italy uh, at the time. And, uh, and, uh, and the river David, it was very important because salt of the salt pans of, uh, of the mouth of the reader could be uh, sent inland through the, the via the river. So, um, according to the, uh, the tradition, Romulus organized uh, the, the people in, into three, three tribes. Then, ten Curia per tribe. Uh, Curia uh, is, is a bunch of people. So each Curia, uh, so we have 30 Curia. Uh, each Curia uh, should provide 100 infantrymen and 10 cavalrymen. So this makes a uh, Centuria. Centuria that's from Centum. Centum that's 100. Okay? Uh, and the Centuria is going to be and will be the nucleus of the future Roman army. So Romulus uh, was assisted uh, by a council of patres, the oldest uh, members of families. So the patres was called Senex, okay, the old, the, the eldest. So the eldest means uh, uh, so this from the, the Senex, the Senex comes the word Senate, and uh, the Senate was in charge of electing, uh, uh, of assisting the king and electing the. the the other kings, the following kings. Well, from uh, 753 to 616, we do have four Latin and seven kings. That's Romulus, Numa Pompilius, Tullo Stilio, and Anco Marzio. They, they are probably more because the time period is, is too long. And uh, well, the center of the monarchy is uh, obviously the Palatine Hill, which is the dominant position on the river, uh, the true Acropolis. You know the Acropolis in, uh, uh, you probably know the Acropolis in, in, uh, in, in, in Athens. Uh, it, it overlooks the city, so that's, that's, that's very high on the city, and we, we can call it Acropolis. So the Palatine was the Acropolis of, uh, of Rome, but, uh, and the city had an artisan commercial area, probably in the, in the forum area, where the market uh, probably also took place. Um, and according to tradition, the, the last king, Tullo Stilio, is the ruler under whom Rome takes over Alba Longa and other uh, Latin uh, uh, cities uh, surrounding, uh, surrounding Rome. So, uh, well, I, I do apologize for, for not setting the, 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 the right, uh, the right uh, order, the, the, my, my slice in the right order. So I promise that next time I, I'll do better. Uh, anyway, um, let's take a wider look at uh, Italy uh, in the 7th century BC. Um, so in Northern Italy we have the Celts in yellow, but also we have uh, uh, Veneti and Liguri. Uh, Veneti, you know, Veneti, Venice, Veneto. Veneto is the region where you see Veneti. That's the region called Veneto right now. So it comes from uh, from that that denomination. Okay. And Liguri also, you know, if you go to Cinque Terre, you are in uh, in or Portofino, you are in Liguria. So uh, that's Liguri, Liguria from Liguri, the population in uh, in, in those times. Uh, then uh, in, in central Italy you have the Etruscans, Tuscany, in Tuscany you have the Etruscans, then you have uh, some other populations, uh, the Equi, Volsci, Sabines, and so on. And then in, in south, on, uh, on the Apennines, you have the, the a large military confederation, the, the Sennites. And, uh, and uh, far south, uh, where now Naples is, uh, uh, Taranto, uh, 
Matera, uh, Foggia, Bari, uh, those were the cities founded from, by the Greeks. Uh, so Naples, Neapolis uh, is a new city in, in Greek, but also Terrace or, or Syracuse, in, in far south. And uh, well, uh, let me show you also uh, Latium. Latium, uh, that's the area of Rome, just surrounding Rome. You see that Rome has to face north the Etruscans. Then uh, it uh, it uh, it is uh, it is. Uh, um, uh, we have uh, the, the, the Latins, then uh, on the east we have the Sabines, the Equi, the Nietzsche, and the Volsci on the south. So, populations which are, uh, well, uh, uh, which are, which, which border with, with, uh, with uh, uh, Rome, which will be the, the first to be, to be dominated. Um, okay, so, as you can see, uh, Rome uh, dominates, uh, you can see Saline, uh, Rome uh, on, the, on the west, Saline is uh, the salt pans. So uh, dominating an area with the salt pans uh, gave you the possibility to, 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 to trade with other peoples and because salt obviously was very important for, for the, the, the preserving uh, food uh, in those times. And, uh, and so, um, well, from, uh, okay, so from uh, 616 to 510, the Etruscans uh, uh, dominated the city. That is, kings uh, Tarquinius Priscus, Servius Tullius, and Tarquinius uh, Superb. Uh, more than a military occupation of the city, this is the absorption of Rome, you can see the, the Etruscans on the north, uh, into the area of uh, Etruscan influence, carried out with, with control over Roman trade and, and production. Um, so under the Etruscan rule, the, the city is, uh, is consolidated both from a urban and uh, an administrative point of view. Uh, all the Etruscan rulers of Rome are attributed to public works. The, the, and, uh, well, the, the, the origins of the Etruscans date back to the settling uh, of people coming from, uh, from uh, Asia Minor, and they were very good at working metals. So, okay, that's why they traded so well with other countries, because they sold their, their, their manufacts made from uh, metals, and that area was very rich in, 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 in iron. Uh, you have an area called the, the, the Colina, the Metal Hills, on south of, uh, in, in, southern, in southern Tuscany. And um, so the, the Etruscans sold uh, to Italy, to other countries in Italy, uh, the, the metal and luxury products. Okay? So, according to tradition, the, the first king, Tarquinius Priscus, studied the urbanization of Rome. He built a, a, a large drainage channel, the Cloaca Maxima, to make all the flat areas uh, among the hills habitable. Then the Circus Maximum, uh, the, 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 the famous circus uh, area of the circus south of the Palatine, and the temple of uh, Jupiter Capitoline. And uh, the city, in those times, began uh, uh, to become a, a real town, with well-traded streets, uh, houses that were no longer huts, but uh, real buildings with windows and roof and an atrium, and the forum, which is uh, the, the central square where all the citizens gathered. Um, so his uh, successor, Sergio Tullio, promoted an important reform, political and military together. He reorganized the army, um, reducing the military importance of the individuals and, uh, by training and, uh, and discipline, uh, organizing uh, the, 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 the military units uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Manipula. That's, uh, that's uh, a military unit which, uh, which fights together. 
okay? So, and uh, um, as in Greece, uh, the army was composed only of those who could arm themselves at their own uh, expense. So he distributed the population in, uh, in five census classes according to the degree of armament that anyone could maintain. Well, the first class is made up of, uh, of citizens who can pay for all the weapons and must contribute with the greatest number of armed men. The fifth has only throwers with, uh, with slingshots. And um, each class consisted of a number of centuria, and uh, so-called because they had to provide 100 men. I told you before, cento is 100. And uh, only armed citizens could participate in the political uh, life of, of Rome, so that uh, uh, now it's not a, a matter of, uh, of birth to participate in politics, but it's a matter of, of wealth, okay? So, um, now the, the, we, we, we still have, uh, you can still have, see here, uh, I want to show you the, the, this slide again, because uh, uh, that's uh, uh, the, the, the Serbian walls, Serbio Tullio built the Serbian walls, you can see here, uh, surrounding the seven hills uh, and uh, he built a fortification uh, I can show it here this is the fortification this is what you can actually see right now in, in, uh, in Rome and this is the first circle of, uh, of, uh, of walls other circles were built uh, later on but this is the prime the, 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 um, the, the, the first one which was uh, which was uh, was built uh, in, uh, in in those times, okay. So now this picture shows uh, uh, the end of the domination of, uh, of the Etruscans. Uh, the, the 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 guy in the center is the King Tarquinius, uh, uh, nicknamed the Superb. According to the tradition, he behaved like a, a, a tyrant and. Uh, his figure seems to symbolize all, all the negativities of, uh, of, uh, of monarchical power. So the people sent the royal family away, proclaiming the Republic in 509. Okay? Um, so, what happens in 509? The Republic is, uh, is founded. And the, the consulate is established. What's the consulate? Two consuls with the, the imperium. The imperium is a, 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 an absolute power. Power of supreme military command. Um, they chair the, the rallies. They convene the senate. They administer justice. They are two kings, but they are not kings. And they have the power of mutual veto. So, um, Imperium, from uh, Imperium comes the, the word uh, Imperator, that's the Emperor, okay? So uh, later on the Emperor will take its name, his name from the, the, the power of the Imperium, the, the supreme power, okay? But it will not be two anymore, uh, it will be just one, okay? And, uh, and so, the, the patricians, the aristocrats, uh, the, the patrician mean uh, the descendants from, from the patres, those who founded the city, they formed the senate. The senate is accessible only to the members of their families. Each of them bears the name of uh, the ancestor who founded it, Julius, Valerius, Emilius, uh, well, uh, Gaius, Julius, Caesar, okay? Julius means uh, the, 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 the uh, James, the, 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 the original family, okay? So that's uh, Julius, the, the James, James is uh, the original family, Julia is uh, the name of, uh, of the family. Uh, there are other families, uh, Valerius, uh, Emilia, James Valeria, James Emilia, James Claudia. Uh, so uh, we will see uh, later on uh, uh, we will talk about the, the names of the, of the Romans, okay? 
So remember, the, the Senate is only accessible to the members of, uh, of, of the families. Now, patricians held the exclusivities of the duties of rights in the city community. While those who did not have the same duties were indicated by the name of plebeians and had to devote themselves to activities that allowed them to obtain the means of subsistence, such as herding, agriculture, and general or manual jobs. Okay, so here you see uh, the, the the symbol of the legion. The, uh, it's a picture of uh, of the, the, the famous eagle. Every legion has uh, has an eagle as a, as a, as its symbol, and that's this writing. Uh, um, below it, SPQR, okay? It stands for Senatus Populus Que Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome. The Senate and the people. Senate comes first, people comes after it, okay? It, is that clear enough? Who's ruling the country? That's the, the, the Senate, and uh, I just wanted to tell you how it is inscribed in, uh, in, uh, in Roman uh, culture to have uh, the, the, the Senate uh, uh, as, uh, as the dominant uh, part of, of the society, okay? Now you can see here, um, the, 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 the richer the uh, citizen is, the more taxes he has to pay, uh, we, we can see a petition on the on the on the right and the petition lady uh, just uh, behind him. So this is a patrician house, okay? So uh, probably the patrician uh, is uh, the, the, the guy beside the petition is uh, is an aide. Maybe he could be uh, uh, one of his slaves. The the the, the most uh, um, uh, the, the the guy who is in charge with the house, whereas the others probably are all slaves or maybe they, 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 they are people who are paid by the petition. So the, the richer a, a citizen is, the more taxes he has to pay and the more years he has to serve under arms. For those who want to start a public career, the minimum is 10 years and therefore only the rich can practically undertake it because they only they can spend so much time away from the farm or, or the shop. But even if you want to exercise your political rights first and then your voting rights, you must have been a soldier because only then you can take part in the Comitia, Comitia Centuriata, that's the amplicity assembly of the Centuria, okay? which is the highest legislative body of, of the state. So, the, the man who has survived 10 years of military life uh, and uh, the, a, a few battles in between, can embark on a political career that goes step by step. It is completely elective and is subject to all sorts of uh, precautions. The Comitia examine the nominations and award the appointments, which are all, all, please take note, they are all multiple, that is, made up of several people. No one only can rule or have any, 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 be in charge of anything until the time of, uh, of the emperors. But the consul took office on March 15 and ruled for just one year. The two consuls ruled for just one year. They are also religious leaders and direct uh, its most uh, uh, important rights. In wartime, they transform into general and lead the army. Each consul has one half of it. Okay. So, the, the assembly is not permanent, but it meets at the call of a council or tribune and cannot issue laws by itself. It can only vote the proposals that the magistrate makes by majority, yes or no. The Senate meets in the Curia in front of the Forum, 
at the request of the council who presides over the assembly, its decisions do not have the, the, the forces of law, but they are only a suggestion to the magistrate, but he almost never brought this before the Comitia a proposal which has not received yet the prior approval by the Senate. So let's back, get back to Senatus Populus Que Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome. Okay? When a crisis is uh, imminent, the, the Senate. Oh, let me show you a picture of the Comitia. This is uh, the guy who wants to be elected uh, in, in a, it could be a consul or a, a questor or an edile who is in charge with the public works or um, a, a, a censor who is in charge with uh, calculating the taxes uh, every citizen has to pay. Uh, so when a crisis is imminent, the Senate resorts to a special emergency decree that's the Senatus Consultus Consultum Ultimum, by which it decides irrevocably. So the Senate is, as I told you, the ultimate ruler of the state. In the event of uh, irreversible, the grave, clear and present danger, as we say today, in these times, in these days, the Senate points a dictator, 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 Okay, you know what, dictator is also in the English language, for six months or a year, and investing him of, uh, with, with full power. Um, so, as I said before, the two consuls lead the army. In the Republican period before the Punic Wars in, in the third century, there were two armies, one consular army for each consul. The army is unique, as in the case of uh, the Battle of Cannes, the famous battle, we will see it next time. The consuls alternate daily. That is, one consul uh, leads on Monday, uh, the other consul leads on Tuesday, and uh, the first consul leads on Wednesday, and so on. So, not very effective, actually. Mm, but that's the way that they wanted it to be. Um, and often the, the two consuls or the dictator in his descent um, would not get along too well. They, they were personal, uh, they could be personal political rivals. They, they, they were, they, they, they usually were. And uh, this did not favor the unity of the command, obviously. And uh, Everyone had uh, a military experience, but the consul didn't. <laughs> Most consul didn't. And they didn't have um, a command experience before being consul. Uh, and so they did not have, many times they didn't have uh, any competences at, at all as generals. And uh, if armies won battles, it was not thanks to them. Perhaps the, the greatest mistake of the Romans was to change a commander every year, depriving them of command just as they began to learn the art of war. Hmm. So, getting back to the consuls, uh, generally speaking, within the Roman political society, um, the principle of preventing an individual from gaining overwhelming individual power is, is rooted. For example, in the military there are two centurions per, for each platoon, three prefects for each uh, cavalry wing, six tribunes, we say colonels, we can see colonels of this time for, for each legion, um, and, uh, and uh, obviously this system is very weak. And also it has to, the, the army has to be reconvened, uh, reconvinced every year, he's recalled every year. So it's not a permanent army. People go back to their fields, to their occupation, to their shops. So when you reconvene them every year, obviously uh, the, the whole process has to start from, from, from scratch. Okay, but because beside aristocracy, most citizens, uh, citizens are in principle, uh, they are farmers, 
They can only afford to spend a few weeks of their time on a military campaign until uh, this will go on until, uh, what, uh, the third century BC? Yeah, because they have to return to their fields. As a result, conflicts are short and are usually determined by a single clash of, uh, of, uh, of forces. The interaction of, uh, of normal working uh, uh, life can ruin these soldier farmers uh, who had traditionally formed the, the, the base of the troops. Um, so throughout the Republican period, the soldiers fighting for Rome were their citizens and it only turned professional in the first century BC. And the defense of the state was considered uh, at least by senators, uh, as a duty, a responsibility, and uh, also a privilege. Um, we can compare this state, this, this thing, uh, like uh, the draft of uh, uh, the military service in, uh, in my country, for instance, where I had to, 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 to go with the uh, to leave my occupation, uh, my studies, and, and, and go for 12 months. Uh, I was enlisted for 12 months. It was, uh, it was mandatory for 12 months. And then I got back to my civil, civil uh, uh, occupation. This was back in, in, uh, in, the, in the Cold War times. But it's, it's, it's very similar. So at the end of the 5th century, we go back to the end of the 5th century. You remember, we, we talked about uh, 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 the end of the 6th century, uh, 509 BC, the, the foundation of the Republic. Now we are at the end of the 5th century, and Rome is becoming a remarkable force in central Italy, and it's competing with uh, the uh, Etruscans and uh, with uh, the Greeks, so you can see it in this map. Um, you see Rome in the, in the middle, so the Tuscans are in uh, uh, north, Umbri, uh, east, Sanniti, uh, south, and uh, Italici, Messalia, Puri, that's Greeks. Carthaginians, Greeks, um, these populations were south, okay? so. Uh, in these years, the Etruscans, uh, uh, defeated uh, by, by the Celts, by the Carthaginians, uh, by the, the, the Greeks, start to lose their, their power and, uh, and their influence north of, uh, of, of Rome. And, uh, and we are in the year 390, and the Celts, the Celti, Celti from the north, brown area, okay? The, the Celts from the north invade the territories of the Etruscans. And uh, when the Celts are overwhelming the Etruscans, the Romans intervene, but they are severely defeated in the Tiber Valley at the confluence of the river Albia. That's uh, what uh, will be called the Dies Alliances, uh, Fortunate Day. Uh, that's uh, the July 18th, 319 will be always engraved in, uh, in, uh, in Roman, in, in Roman uh, history. The uh, Salensis, unfortunate day, the day of the, of the, of the defeat uh, of Rome, uh, of the occupation of Rome. And uh, because the legions could not, uh, could not start the, 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 the Gauls, the, the Celts, the, 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 the Romans called the Celts the Gauls. Okay, and um, after this defeat, the city of Rome itself, without fortification, uh, remains open and, and defenseless. People gather on the on the on the capital, okay, in Campidoglio, the capital, and uh, the Gauls occupy the, the city, but uh, renounce to seize the, the stronghold of the capital. And uh, they are commanded by the King of Breno, here, King Breno, okay? This picture shows the famous uh, Via Victis episode. That's uh, when the Romans started to um, argue about the amount of gold 
they have to pay to have the cows go away. And the Breno says, buy victis, woe to, to, to the losers, okay? Be careful, <laughs> because <laughs> this is not the time to, to, to bargain, okay? So, um, but per Roman stay and the Celts who are not, mm, who do not want to occupy the city, but just to, 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 to raid it and uh, to, 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 to get, uh, to, to take away uh, the, 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 all the riches they can, they, they leave the city and uh, well, uh, even if this defeat, it, it increases its, uh, its prestige as, uh, uh, as it is the only force to, to, the only one to force the Gauls to, to withdraw from a location they had occupied. So, um, the Romans were badly shaken by this military disaster. And many historians believe to, to the reforms instituted to prevent a future disaster set them on the road to military superiority because the genius of Roman military commanders was their ability to learn from those they fought and adapt their techniques and technology to suit their own purpose. In, the, in this case, for instance, the Romans copied the, the swords of, of the Gauls and uh, gave all the, the, the soldiers uh, swords which resembled the swords uh, of the Gauls. And this happened many times in, the, in Roman history. So, in, um, from uh, 389 to 350, Rome resumes the, 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 the control of, of Lazio and uh, manages to fight against uh, Veio. Veio is uh, uh, um, uh, an Etruscan city and conquer it. So it extends its, uh, uh, its, uh, its dominance uh, north to, to, Etruscan, to an Etruscan, um, uh, the Etruscan countryside. Then, now the Romans turn south First, uh, they fight, uh, the, they, they, they have three, three wars with a population called Semnites. Uh, the Semnites, remember, uh, it was uh, uh, in the south, okay? Samniti, Samniti, Semnites, Samniti. This is the Semnites. These are Semnite uh, um, uh, warriors in, in, in a tomb, dep as depicted in a tomb, okay? So, from uh, uh, 340 to uh, 290, three wars with the, the Semnites. Okay? The most famous episode is uh, the um, Caudine Forks. Here. The Caudine Forks, uh, uh, well, it was uh, in 321 BC. Okay? So the consuls. Uh, were invading the Semnite territory and uh, they were in a region unknown to them and they were surrounded in the valley of the river Caudino and uh, they had to surrender. Uh, and so this is the episode called the, the Cau Caudine Forks, the Forte Caudine, the Caudine Forks. And the uh, Romans must, must hand over all weapons and 600 hostages and pass below, every woman has to pass below a wooden trunk as a sign of defeat. But uh, after some years of peace, Rome resumes war with the, with the Semites and the Etruscans and defeats all the population which have, have um, coalized um, against them. And that's the Etruscans, that's the Semites, that's the Umbri, that's uh, the, 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 the Semites, uh, uh, he wins them all. Rome wins them all uh, in, in, in different battles, and the final battle is uh, is uh, in, in 290. And so, by 290, uh, Rome uh, is uh, is uh, is dominating the the central part of Italy. Okay, that's the Etruria. Uh, that's uh, the, the here, the Sun Knights, uh, uh, Rome is dominating the whole of, uh, of, uh, of central Italy. 
and uh, it's not over because uh, by 282, Romans conquered the territory of the Galli of the Gauls, Senoni. Senoni is here. Okay, so you see the Senoni. It, it adds. It, that's where uh, Rimini is right now, and uh, so it adds another portion of, of the territory. So Italy, uh, the, the yellow one, the the, the, the orange, red, uh, pink, and the, the, the Semites. Okay. So. We are almost at the end of it. Uh, the final step of the conquest of the Italian peninsula is the war against the Greek city, uh, city of uh, Taranto, Taras. Okay, Taranto is here in uh, Tarentum. It's uh, is uh, is uh, in the south. Okay, so um, the, the 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 cities of the south. Uh, are increasingly, feel increasingly threatened by the expansion of, of the Italian peoples. They, they, they turn towards, uh, um, of Rome, sorry, they turn towards it, okay? They, they turn against it, okay? And uh, uh, some other cities uh, instead look for the protection of Rome. And uh, in, uh, in 285, the cities of uh, Turi, Locri, and, uh, and, uh, and Reggio ask Rome to be defended from a local population, the Lucanians. The Greek city of Taras, uh, which is uh, at the time the main center of uh, Magna Grecia, that's, uh, the, the Greek uh, part of Italy, um, the south, this, uh, this is the, the, the the beige area here. Um, they, they, Taras, obviously, Taranto, is, it feels uh, threatened by the, this interference uh, in, the, in its sphere of influence. And, uh, and uh, the Romans uh, um, do not have a military fleet. They are, uh, they, they, they are earthlings, okay? They are not interested in the... the, the they, they, they conquered the land, but on the sea, they, they have no fleet, they have no experience. And, uh, but they can count on the warships of the, of the Allies, okay? And uh, they, one day they, they, they show up uh, on, the, on the bay of, of, of Taranto here, and uh, as a sign of power. But uh, the, 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 the Tarantine, they attack this fleet and, uh, and, and destroy it. So, it's war. So, Taranto asks for the help of uh, Pyrrhus, the king of uh, Pyrrhus, on the other side of the Adriatic Sea. And um, so, uh, Pyrrhus comes to Italy with the aim, with his army, with the aim of uh, conquering the southern, southern Italy and, and Sicily and, uh, and, uh, and become uh, a, a trans, trans sea uh, um, power. Okay? So, this is a picture, uh, may look very strange, but uh, that, that's true. That's, uh, that's how, uh, how probably it, it, it was in, in, in the battles between uh, the Romans and Pyrrhus. Uh, in fact, uh, Pyrrhus lands in Tarto with, uh, with, uh, with a strong army. With a strong army and includes uh, 20 war elephants. And uh, clashes uh, uh, with the Romans uh, uh, close to Matera in uh, 280. And he defeats them uh, as the Romans uh, could not counter uh, the, the, the forces, Pyrrhus' forces on horseback uh, and were not trained to defend themselves uh, from uh, the assaults of, of the elephants. Um, but uh, Pyrrhus' uh, losses are just slightly lower than the Romans. Uh, and the Romans can replace uh, uh, its losses by enlisting new men, but Pyrrhus can't because he's not on, on his land, he's on the other side of, uh, of the sea. So then uh, Pyrrhus, supported by, by Taranto and other Greek uh, cities, once again clashes with the Romans one year later, in 200 and, uh, 
71 near Foggia, still in, uh, in Puglia, Puglia. And uh, Pyrrhus wins, but uh, once again his losses are so high that he prefers to enter the negotiation, a peace negotiation with the Romans. That will be called the Pyrrhus victories. Uh, when we say in Italian Pyrrhus victories, la vittoria di Piero, this means that you won, but your losses were so high that uh, you, 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 you have uh, a, a problem in the continuation of, of the war, or in the continuation of, of your action uh, against your, your enemy. It, is, it has passed on in, in, in the normal, in, in the, the everyday language. I have a, a, a victory, a Pyrrhus victory, when uh, I, can, I can win. Technically, I'm the winner. Uh, but uh, there's uh, uh, a, a very low possibility that I can uh, go on with my war. Okay? So remember this, La Vittoria di Piero, that's the Pyrrhus victory. Okay? So uh, Pyrrhus goes uh, uh, to, to Sicily with his army after this, uh, this battle uh, in, a, in, a, in an attempt to, to, to conquer Sicily. But um, he's countered by Sicilians and Sicilian armies, and the whole he goes back to uh, to Apulia. But uh, when he returns back to in uh, 275, then the Romans uh, have learned how to fight him, and they uh, defeat him in in Benevento in 275. So and also Taranto is defeated. So Pyrrhus gets back to Pyrrhus to, on the other side of the of the of the of the, of the, of the sea, and uh, and Taranto is uh, uh, surrenders and uh, its territory is uh, is given away, and uh, many of his uh, in, its inhabitants are, are enslaved. So the defeat of Pyrrhus means that the ability and strength of the Roman infantry can defeat the strongest army of the, of the time, uh, the, 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 the Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus was uh, in here, it was, uh, was, uh, the army was uh, one of the armies uh, of the time, the most powerful armies of the time. Uh, they, the, the tradition, its tradition went back to Alexander the Great, who conquered uh, the whole of Asia until uh, fought uh, until the, the river uh, uh, to the rivers of uh, to, to the shores of the river Indo in, in, in India. So uh, the Romans extended their influence to several cities in, in Magna Grecia and uh, the, the Romanization of Italy begins because uh, the, the cities who uh, some cities are uh, offer to, 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 to host uh, uh, Roman troops and, uh, and this way uh, Rome city after city comes to dominate also southern Italy. So uh, if we go back to, to this map you can see that now the whole colored area is Roman. Okay, First the Etrurians, then the Senoni, then the Semnites and then south Lucani, Bruzzi, Messavi, it's, it's all Greeks. Okay, and so Rome now is uh, um, the ruler of the of the Italian of the Italian peninsula, and now the Romanization of Italy begins. Uh, this is a picture of uh, the Roman ways. The Romanization means uh, that you first have to connect the different parts of the of the of the country. So. First, in 312, uh, the construction of the Appian Way from Rome to Capua, okay? Rome to Capua and then to Taranto. This is the Appian Way, okay? It's called the Regina Viarum, the Regina, the, the Queen of the, of the Ways. Uh, it's called the Appian because uh, uh, it was proposed and directed, its construction was directed by the, the magistrate um, Appius, Claudius, Cecus, okay? Then you have uh, Via Aurelia, for instance, uh, built by the consul Aurelius, the Via Flaminia, built by the consul Flaminius, and the Via Emilia. Emilia is now Emilia, it crosses the region called Emilia Romagna. So 
the, the region takes its name from the Via Emilia, so from the Consul Emilio Paolo, Emilius, Emilius Paulus, who directed its, uh, its construction in, uh, in the years um, uh, at the, the beginning of, uh, of the second century uh, BC. Okay? So, uh, we are at the end of, of a process, okay? So, uh, you can see here, here is the Appian Way. Uh, that's how the Romans built the, 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 the roads. Uh, and uh, they, 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 these roads uh, were necessary to move people, but primarily armies throughout the peninsula. Okay? And they were built primarily by, by soldiers. By, by legionnaires. Okay, but we will see about it uh, next next time. Okay, so we are at the, the end of uh, a process, a time. Okay, we started in 753 with Romulus uh, here in Rome in a small village, and then piece after piece. Uh, obviously, the Romans didn't didn't envision. The, the, the Romans of those times didn't envision the, the future uh, of dominance of the whole Mediterranean, uh, which came later. But uh, you can see that uh, it's, a, it's a picture of addition, uh, piece by piece. Etruscans, Umbri, Senoni, Samnites, Greeks. Now we are, uh, now it, it, Rome is a power, is a Mediterranean power. Okay, so it's time that uh, uh, it confronts itself with the other powers in the Mediterranean. And uh, next time we will see uh, one of, uh, of the periods of the most important periods in, 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 uh, in Rome's history, uh, the, the fight with uh, Carthage, the Carthaginians. You can see in the south here, Carthage, okay? Carthage is uh, the ruler of uh, an empire which stretches uh, uh, all over the, the, the West Mediterranean. So uh, uh, the fight for this, which would be a fight to the death, uh, will, will, uh, will transform Rome into uh, a Mediterranean power with, uh, with uh, a dominance over the whole of the, of the Western Mediterranean Sea, beyond its uh, natural, bound natural boundaries in Italy. So, uh, that's all for today. I was probably too long, one and a half hours. Uh, it's 12:28 uh, 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 here in Italy. I hope uh, I, I entertained you. Uh, let me see if there are uh, any 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 comments uh, or uh, any any anything uh, uh, any questions. Uh, um, I I cannot see any. Of, of, of these questions, um, so uh, well, I hope that uh, I could entertain you. Uh, you can make any questions when you want. Uh, let me know, and I will be happy to to, to answer you. And uh, well, I think that's all for today. Uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, with uh, more news about Italy and uh, uh, we'll talk about the, the, the war with Carthage and we'll move on with, our, with the history of Italy. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I've been very pleased to tell you this story and I look forward to talking to you uh, once again uh, in the future. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>